name Patrick Tribune Logic Barry from Barry Songs Lab, and today we're going to be looking at uh, some calculus. Now, uh, I actually started uh, calculus when I was two. This is calculus lecture number one, but I actually started calculus when I was two, back in 2014. What's pretty embarrassing was that uh, when I looked back six years ago, first of all, the video quality was poop, and second of all, I realized that I actually made a few mistakes here and there. And those were pretty silly and dumb. I don't realize how I could have made those mistakes. So uh, there were, we also had other plans, so we had to just snip, snip, and cut it off. Today we'll be looking at calculus. And you may recognize this Martin nice man. He was Isaac Newton, born in 1642, and in 1665, he invented what we're talking about today, calculus. And in many areas, it is still important for us in modern times. It's really uh, uh, amazing to see how something so simple has stretched 335 years to now. Anyways, we're going to be looking at limits today. Grammar mistake. And what are limits? So let's say you have an equation. Sorry, Isaac Newton, but I guess I have to go now. So uh, let's say we take the equation y is equal to 2x plus 5. Now, uh, actually, I want to make it 2x plus 3. Let's say we plug in, uh, I don't know, 5. But first, let's say x is 5. If we plug in x is 5, then this gets to, uh, from 2 times x to 2 times 5. x is now 5, remember. 2 times 5 plus 3 is 10 plus 3 is 13. So, now, when x is 5, y is 13. We can illustrate this by graphing it. There we go. If we take y is equal to 2x plus 3, right? So 2x plus 3, yeah. So now let's put a line of all coordinates where x is equal to 5. So now we see which point that do they intersect. And that will have an x coordinate of 5. And let's see what the y coordinate is. 13. See? Proof of my claim. Now, without further decimals to do, uh, th that's how we know that uh, when x is 5, y is 13. Now let's plug in something else instead. Let's say we plug in something like 3. 2 times 3 plus 3 is equal to 6 plus 3 is 9. So, uh, now, let, uh, why is it very practical for most uses of graphing. Y is mostly only used in algebra, but in other sub math subjects where you still need graphing, it's mostly uh, f of x is mostly preferred over y. So, we're going to be using that instead because it's more useful and tangible. Now, anyways, f of x is 2x plus 3. However, since x is now 3, we can make this 3. So f of 3 is 2 uh, times 3 plus 3 is 6 plus 3 equal 9. So now, uh, but let's say we plug in some numbers close to 3. First, let's go on the larger end, 3.1, 3.01, 3.001, or that nice pie you were baked for dinner. So. Uh, if you plug those in, those are going to give you answers that are pretty near 9. So, you can see all of them on screen, but 
they'll give you uh, answers that are pretty close to nine. So, you can see that as the numbers approach three, as x approaches three, y approaches nine. Now let's look at the lower end. 2.9, 2.99, and 2.999. And those are also going to affect it in minimal ways. Or oh, how can I say that? It's going to affect them in minimal ways. It's still very, very, very close to, uh, you know, it's very, very close to 3 still. So, 8.98 and so on. So, and then you can see that they're going to be very, very, very close to 9. So, we can write it this way. This is basically how limits work. The limit, you know, as x approaches 3, the limit of y is x approaches 3, of x, a 2x plus 3, is equal to, remember, 3, uh, three plug in, 2 times 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 3 equals 9. It kind of has a rhythm to it. So, that means the limit of 2x plus 3 is x approaches 3 is 9. That's how limits work. Now, uh, we can also graph this using decimals. So, let's get back our trusty decimals. Uh, let me visit someone first. First tab. Hi, Isaac Newton. Bye, Isaac Newton. So, now, let's say... We put very small bounds, like 2.8 to 3.2. What, what have I done? 3.2. So, let's say, I don't know, I put pi here. So, 3.142, 3 I guess. And you can see that it's near 9. 9.284, that's pretty near 9. And you uh, can see if I get a little closer to nine, uh, 3, 3.13 for example, then it gets a, l a little closer to 9. It decreased by minus uh, 0.3 and then closer, closer. It's uh, now decreased to 9.2 from 9.25. And eventually, you hit that sweet spot where y, uh, x is 9 and y, oh, oops, y is 3. So you get that perfect sweet spot where x is 3 and y is 9. This perfect sweet spot right over here. And that's basically how limits work. Now, there were obviously a lot of other ways because what we did over here was we literally just plugged in the value we see below the limit into this equation and got our answer. But there are some problems with that method. They usually won't work most of the time because here's uh, an example of what can happen with this method. So please do not try this at home. This can happen. Uh, the Mac police will come for you. And um, this can happen where you have a, n a non zero number over a zero. And this can happen where you just have a scramble of radicals and fractions. Now, there's probably no hope for you, and you'll probably get arrested by the Mac police if this comes up. Uh, but there is some hope for you here and here. Uh, so, uh, we'll discuss ways to do these kinds of things next time. But, for now, 
we're going to stop here. Here, thank you everybody for watching, and I'll see you next time. Oh yeah, by the way, this video was sponsored by Brilliant. If you want to become a little smarter, if you want to do some science puzzles, or if you just want to learn in general, Brilliant is definitely the right person. Subscribe to Mary Science Lab! Subscribe to Mary